Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, we will apply some volume discount in our app. Let's see how you can use our Shopify function to apply volume discount. And we also learn about configuring more inputs in the Shopify function. So in the previous video, this is what we have done. We just uh, deploy our function. We just lock something that our function is running as expected. And in this video, we are going to apply some discount. Okay, cool. Let's start. Um, let's come here back to our app. When we register a function, if it is um, a discount function, uh, this is something that happened and you may not notice this. If I go to this, the admin of this store, this is the, the store that we have registered our function. If I go to the discount, you can see this is the discount that was created and Shopify will give you every details about how this was added. This was added using the function basic app and if you click on this, it is going to open the app. You can configure this later. I will show you how you can configure this URL, where it should open and when um, it open, it should directly go to that exact function. For now, this is where it register. Uh, as I mentioned, some of the function have different ways of registering. If you are using discount validation, it is not going to happen here in the discount. If this is a discount function, it will appear here. If it is, um, uh, let's say, discount allocator or cart validation or checkout customization, those one will not appear here. It is somewhere else. I will show you later in this video series. For now, this is our app and this is our discount. Nothing much. Let's see how this one should apply a discount. Uh, I will go back to my app. Uh, let's go to storefront and see what is happening right now. We don't have anything. What I can do is I can console.log the input that I have. Uh, what my goal is, if someone add more than two, I am going to apply 10% discount. That is just a basic example of applying a discount. Okay, cool. Let's go back to our code and this is what happened. Uh, in here, we have an empty which should run at the last, but before that, we can run anything we want. You can see we have some configuration. For now, we can comment this. We don't need this, but we will discuss this in the future video, how you can uh, bring your configuration here. Okay, cool. Uh, now let's uh, console.log our input and see what do we have. Input is the data that Shopify will give you. Either that is cart details and how much details you have, I will discuss in this video. Let's log this and see what will happen. In order to run this one, there are different ways. We have some videos about how to log this for development. For now, we will manually update our card. When we update the card, the log will display in the log section. Product object, object, object. When it runs object, object, it means, okay, we have some object here. If you want to object the act, log the actual data, this is how you do it. Instead of this one, you can you can say like something like this. Uh, JSON.stringify input and in here you are going to pass two values the first one is null the second one is two if you run this with the uh, json okay it should be json and it is going to give me a beautiful data uh, of this data the card information that i have let's update the card again we have one product let's see what do we have you can see it locked my information and we have discount and this is the readable json data that you have where is this data coming from? This is coming from the cart input. Where are other information about cart, like product or anything else? It is because we have not configured that yet. I mentioned this in the previous video, we have run.graphql. This is where you say how much data you want and what do you want. If you update this, for example, you say cart here, inside the cart, you have different things. Uh, let's say, do you have a cart ID or not? I don't know, to be honest. I will save this for now. If it if it does not have any error, you can see it, the query has like the card, but it doesn't have the field ID. Okay, cool. This is a problem. Card does not have ID. Now, where do you find this input? Whenever you, you have a function, you have limits on how much input you want to pass. So in here, you cannot, uh, you cannot request everything about the card. Uh, I will talk about the limits in the future video. For now, let's see where you can find these parameters and what data is available. Let's go back to the documentation. I will go and search for Shopify functions. 
Now, when you come here to the API, uh, let's go to one of the functions that we have. For this one, we will go to the, the product discount API. If I go to the reference, uh, this is where you find the discount API. This is the product discount. I will go to the about section. In the previous video, I teach you where are this documentation and how you can find this. Now, if you open the reference under the common object, this is where you find all the data. For example, card, which attribute do we have? Okay, we have buyer identity, we have cost. Okay, cool. We don't have an ID here. That's why we got an error. So in here, instead of the ID, I'm going to put cost. Let's make it in the new line and save it. Now, it successfully pushed that for me and cart cost must be a selection of subfield. Okay, cool. You cannot only say cart and it should have the subfield of subtotal and it should have the amount. Now, to find out more about this, it is cart cost. You click on this, it will give you the other thing like uh, subtotal, it has the money. And when you go to the money uh, version 2, it is going to tell you the amount and also the total. So if I click on this, okay, you can see it has amount, it has currency. That's why this is how it works. You have subtotal, you have total, and for this one, you have amount, you have currency. Cool. If I save this this time, I should not get any error. But if I do, I have to fix that. Okay, cool. Subtotal type of cost. Did you mean subtotal? Yes. Okay, I just made a mistake. Save this. You can see the errors are beautifully written here. You can read the error and fix them right away. So let's go back. And this time I'm going to update my card. Let's come back to my log and see what do we have. Cool. This is my product function log. And after that, we have a beautiful JSON data, all the information about the card. We have cost, which is the subtotal amount and also total amount. This is displaying here. You can also uh, find the currency if you want. Now you know which data you have. So let's see which um, you have the data. Let's get the product details, right? I'll go back to the GraphQL in here. Again, you can see all the data is here. You just have to find it. We are interested in the cart line. So I have to write the cart line. You can see it is written as capital, like a uh, title case here, but it is not always title case. So you have to know this one that this is not the exact same thing that you have to put the same way as the cart cost or anything. So you have cart and this is what you should do. Always scroll down and see what type of data is returned here. Cart line is under this, okay, under the, the cart. So you cannot go above the cart and say it should be right here. Uh, you can come below the cart, but I will put it here as lines. Now I'll close this and see what data do we have in the lines. Okay, we have lines here. Oops, I shouldn't click on that. This is lines that we have and we have cost, we have ID and each of them is a line. Let's go here once, cart, again, you have lines, you come to the lines and in here you have other field like cost, ID and everything. What I'm interested in is in merchandise and also ID. This is the cart ID. If you are familiar with Shopify, cart ID is different and you also have access to the quantity. Let's come here. Uh, I have, I am interested in all of this. Okay, no, no, that's a lot of data. Uh, since I have configured my uh, copilot, it auto complete this. If I save this, it is going to give me a lot of error because product discount, these things are not available in under the this uh, branch like price range, things like that. These are not available. Uh, Copilot is completely doing it wrong. Product title is available, but not sure if this is how we, we display it. Merchandise, yeah. Again, merchandise is not how we write it here. For now, we need the, qual the quantity and also the ID. I save it. It should, um, okay, we have another error. I don't know where is this one coming from. Okay, no, we don't have this. Okay, cool, everything should be fine. Again, I will remove some space, save this, and it should, okay, cool. Everything looks fine for me. GraphQL types, some of them are giving error like this, but you get the idea of how you will uh, get this data 
we have quantity you have the id and this is integer this is an id again you have merchandise here okay for merchandise this is how we open the bracket and what type of data do we have here i always do not like memorize this thing you have a custom product or product variant so all you have to do is just look at the uh, the bottom below like it has a meta field this is going to be the product variant here so how do we write it we just write it as a you no know, product variant id uh, you have product you have id and everything let's save this for now everything seems to be fine here uh, i don't know where this error is referring to duplicated the pycode module please use the other one but let's see what happened if i come to my card let's refresh this it did refresh and if i check the log this is the quantity i get this is the id i get this is the merchandise and also the the product you can also access the product tags which we will discuss in the future video but that is basically all the card item all you have to do is get the id of this product and apply discount to this i think this video will get longer so i'm going to do that in the next video in this video you learn like how you can find the inputs in your function and how you can grab them and what data do you need again this has limitation okay if you if you request everything in the card it is going to hit the limit and it's not going to return anything so you have to be very cautious about this please watch the limit video in the future video i'll discuss where you can find it and how what is the limit and how much data you can uh, query here i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video